Okay, we are joined by Miss Pat Russell McLeod. Hi, Pat. Greetings. How are you, Janet? I'm so wonderful, and I want to first thank you for allowing me the time today to talk with you. I'd like to start out first by giving an introduction. If you could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. I'm attorney Pat Russell McLeod, and it is Russell hyphen McLeod, and that's M-C-C-L-O-U-D. I'm an international motivational speaker, and often that is referenced as a professional orator. Uh, my mantra is have speech will travel. This is my 34th year as a professional speaker, and uh, I speak at home, the United States of America, and abroad um, for conferences, graduations, commencements, uh, a plethora of conferencing identifies me as a top of mind speaker because I'm motivational, informational, and entertaining. Wow. Have speech, will travel. I like that. I love that. So let me ask you, Pat, what really uh, inspired you to be a, a, a just a world known? Uh, orator. What, what really got you interested? I have been speaking nationally since I was eight years old because in the black uh, faith community, children are often exposed to debate teams, oratorical contests, etc. That is my journey. That is my path. I was the little girl who could speak. Hmm. And that little girl became competitive early. And in the faith community, the bishop of the AME Zion Church, to which I belonged at the time, came and the congregational members asked him, did they not have a child prodigy in me? He listened, he heard, he decided that I was a child prodigy and he wanted me as a result to keynote his international meeting in California. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Mm -hmm. I was eight. My mother and father agreed that I could go. My mother, uh, my father and mother decided would have to travel with me. And so I keynoted that conference at eight. Wow. And now it's a hundred years later. Wow, that is so awesome, Pat. So tell me, how do you actually prepare um, for your speeches when you're getting ready to go on the road for an event, what goes into your preparation? All my life experiences. I'm a trained lawyer and I also maximize research. So those two components based upon uh, that intensive application to that client, that audience, that need, which is pre-identified by the client. And they tell you what they would hope the deliverables, deliverables would be. Mm -hmm. Namely, they would hope that they get new information. Mm -hmm. um, they would hope that their audience feels challenged uh, and that they walk away with a can-do attitude and behavior because information without action right. is dormant and apathy. So therefore, they become very hopeful that the audience will act upon what a keynote speaker has said. Um, for many years, I was, of course, substantive and highly motivational, but not entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a rapid fire deliverable, delivery, and uh, in that cathartic release, people were almost on a, a speed demon drive mm. emotionally. So with maturity and longevity on the circuit, I have also become entertaining and um, more uh, infusion of humor. Mm -hmm. And it is a key component of my presentations now because people need to, be, to breathe, mm -hmm. to laugh, right. to believe that, oh, I can do this. So when it's just, 
they, they escape the believability that they too can accomplish the achievement. But if you can laugh about it, mm -hmm. it becomes more real, close up, and that audience member takes ownership. That's true. Laughter is very, I always say laughter is very good for the soul. Right. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Um, are you ever nervous? Has there ever been a time that you've been in your speech and you had a fear or you had like a butterfly to come over you? Has that ever happened? It happens every time. And if it does not occur, mm -hmm. if you have no uh, unease in your spirit, I think you're in the wrong career track. Mm -hmm. I think that a person who speaks as often as I do, mm -hmm. as a professional, if you are convinced, I got this, whatever, mm -hmm. just another audience, you're taking your audience for granted. I think that you must have uh, an unease, not a nervous wreck. Right. I'm not describing that person, but I am saying to have an ambivalence about whether and to what extent your preparation meets this audience at their point of need. And I think that is key to preparation and presentation and oneness with your audience. If you don't have it, I think you're arrogant mm -hmm. and you're removed from this particular audience. I was asked, why do you work so hard at it? Mm -hmm. Because every audience is that important. Absolutely. So let me ask this. How do you judge if you're speech has gone over well with an audience. How do you... The audience will tell you. You will know with some immediacy whether they're going with you or talking to each other or using their devices um, to occupy their time to mm -hmm. stop talking. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to engage my audience from the moment I begin Mm -hmm. And I try not to let them go until I'm finished. And that's an art, but allegedly I've accomplished it. Well, I've heard you speak before, Miss Pat, and I think you definitely have the skill and you know how to keep that attention. Let me ask another question here. So let's say someone wants to become a professional orator. What advice would you have for them? Several uh, tips and techniques. One, I am not trained. I am not a person who went through Toastmasters. I am not a person who has had private lessons uh, to capture the uh, um, frame of powerful, dynamic speaking. I am gifted. Mm -hmm. And I am religious. Therefore, those who understand that connectivity um, understand it without me going further. However, if you don't understand it, I am gifted by God to speak as I do. Mm -hmm. So innately, I have been speaking just like this for a lifetime. So I'm not trained. However, for those who have an interest in the art of public speaking, I recommend Toastmasters. I recommend it, it's available, mm -hmm. it's free, mm -hmm. it's in your workplace, at your churches, in your community centers, and you learn tips and techniques that would otherwise never come to you. Mm -hmm. I think it's very helpful to go through a Toastmaster or the Art of Public Speaking uh, a training. Mm -hmm. I think that I don't care how good you think you are, you need to practice. Absolutely. You need to prepare. You need to know what the expectation is from your audience slash client so that you can meet them at their point of need. Uh, don't it's just like this. My husband is a bishop of the AME Church, and people 
in America often have the westernized view that they know exactly what the people you're working with need in the motherland. Mm -hmm. They don't. So move from the premise that you don't know this audience and have your client or your audience uh, presenter to share with you who they are, where they're coming from, mm -hmm. what their theme is, and adhere to it. If they tell you 20 minutes, that's what they mean. Exactly. They do not mean uh, 38 minutes and a half because you felt that your uh, presentation is so dynamic or profound right. that you needed to talk 38 minutes and a half. Right. They had 20 minutes. Exactly. Keep to it. That's it. Um, and use their theme. Mm -hmm. Don't decide that you, this worked in Colorado, so this is going to also work in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. Meet this audience where they are and take them to where your client or audience expects you to be able to do. That's professionalism. I don't care how good you think you are. Mm -hmm. Every audience is different. Right. Adapt. That shows professionalism and respect to the client. Good point. Good point. Okay. What I like to know now, tell us a little about you and what do you do for relaxation? How I do love to travel. I, I travel 180,000 plus miles a year wow. in my work, mm -hmm. but I do love uh, increasingly to travel to distant and different places for pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like sand and beach, and I'm a history major. So globally, I celebrate uh, learning more um, sights and sounds around the world mm -hmm. uh, within the last 24 months. I've been to, uh, for fun, mm -hmm. Paris, London, mm -hmm. and Dubai. Okay. So, um, I want to uh, go to all of the continents in my lifetime, and uh, it's a part of my bucket list mm -hmm. to travel. I am a shopping uh, aficionado. Mm -hmm. I love a sale. <laughs> I love to get as close to the source as possible okay. <laughs> to find things that otherwise would be astronomical and out of my economic reach right. or less. <laughs> so I love that. And um, I love to meet and greet uh, people mm -hmm. globally. And anything that is new information, fresh, uh, stretching my thinking, uh, thought leadership, I love to learn. So even as a student, matriculating uh, in college or high school or elementary school, I like to sit in the front so that I can hear the teacher and learn from the professor's offering. Uh, I love to learn. So anything that puts me in a um, new information environment, I'm there, front row. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you for your time today, Ms. Pat, and I certainly appreciate all the information that you have provided for our listeners. Thank you, Janet. I appreciate being a part of From My Big Eyes. Thanks.